The choice of a solar charge controller can be more complex than it seems, given the common mistakes I regularly come across, and there are certain risks in choosing the wrong device, such as burning out your MPPT controller or damaging your batteries. To choose the right solar charger, it is essential to properly analyze the specifications of a solar panel and take into account the correct values for sizing your device. As soon as you connect two panels in series or in parallel, I often see the same mistakes. So, make sure to stay until case study number two. In this video, we will go through several examples to cover as many cases as possible to help you. Finally, we will also answer a common question about the cable size for an MPPT controller. But before we begin, feel free to check out our electrical diagram pack in the description. Also, consider subscribing to the channel, leaving a like, and don't hesitate to ask your questions in the comments. To avoid drowning in theory, we will directly take a simple practical case to make it more engaging. Here, we have a 12 volt, 220 watt solar panel from Renogi, which we use to charge a 12 volt battery. The controller must support the maximum voltage the panel can produce, including in cold conditions. In fact, in cold conditions, the output voltage of a solar panel increases. This is due to the relationship between temperature and the behavior of photovoltaic cells. Decrease in temperature equals increase in panel voltage. Increase in temperature equals decrease in panel voltage. This is why we will apply a 20% safety margin in our future calculations. First step, checking the maximum input voltage of the charge controller. Here, the VOC, open circuit voltage of the panel, is 21.86 volts, with the safety margin, 21.86 volts times 1.20 equals 26.23 volts. So, an MPPT controller with a minimum input voltage of 30 volts is required. Second step, calculating the maximum output current of the solar controller. The MPPT here will convert the panel voltage into a voltage suitable for the battery while increasing the current intensity. The maximum power of the panel is 220 watts. The charging voltage of a 12 volt battery in bulk mode is 14.4 volts. And the MPPT output current 220 watts divided by 14.4 volts equals 15.3 amperes. Here, we could also apply a safety margin to preserve the lifespan of the MPPT. So, an MPPT controller with an output current of 20 amperes will be a perfect fit. Third step, checking the maximum supported power. The controller must, of course, be able to handle the full power of the 220 watt panel. In summary, the MPPT choice must have at least the following specifications. A minimum input voltage of 30 volts. A minimum output current of 20 amperes a minimum supported power of 220 watts. Now let's check which models would be compatible from two different brands. Looking at the specifications of a Renogy Rover MPPT, the 20 ampere model is suitable in terms of current, power, and voltage. If we choose a model from Victron Energy, the MPPT 100 volt slash 20 amps model also meets all the criteria. This first case study was easy, but you will see that when connecting these same two panels in series, most people make mistakes when choosing the MPPT controller. When connecting two panels in series, we must recalculate the input voltage, output current, and the total power the controller needs to handle. Pay attention, every word in this sentence is important. First step, checking the maximum input voltage of the controller. In a series connection, the voltages add up, but the current remains the same. This is important to remember for the input side. The nominal VOC of the panel is 21.86 volts. With the 20% safety margin, 21.86 times 1.20 equals 26.23 volts. Since they are in series, 26.23 times 2 equals 52.46 volts. So, the MPPT controller must accept a minimum input voltage of 55 volts to prevent overvoltage issues. Second step, checking the maximum supported power. Here, the total power of the two panels will be 220 watts times 2 equals 440 watts. Third step, checking the output current. With a 12 volt battery, the MPPT increases the current to maintain the same power. 440 watts divided by 14.4 volts, the bulk charging voltage, equals 30.55 amperes. If we apply a 25% safety margin, optional, 30.55 times 1.25 equals 38.19 amperes. So a 40 ampere controller would be a perfect fit. In summary, the MPPT choice must have the following specifications. A minimum input voltage of 55 volts. A minimum output current of 30 or 40 amperes. A minimum supported power of 440 watts. However, since we included safety margins for a Renogi model, the 30 ampere version could almost work, but I would personally go for the 40 ampere model. In terms of power and input voltage, we are well within limits. For a Victron model, the 30 ampere version could also work, as it meets the power and voltage requirements, and would not exceed 30 amperes. However, choosing the MPPT 100 volts 50 amps model would provide a lot of extra margin. Always remember to differentiate between the input current and the output charging current of the MPPT controller. 
In this third case study, we will take two more powerful panels, also connected in series. This time, we will compare the impact of the controller choice when charging a 12-volt battery versus a 24-volt battery. First step, checking the input voltage of the controller. Here are the characteristics of a 420-watt panel. The open circuit voltage, VOC, is 38.63 volts. If we connect two panels in series, we get a voltage of 77.26 volts. Even with a 20% safety margin, an MPPT controller rated at 100 volts is sufficient. Second step, checking the maximum supported power. The total power of the two panels is 420 watts times 2, which equals 840 watts. Third step, checking the output current. Once again, the MPPT adjusts the voltage to charge a 12-volt battery, which increases the current. Using the formula, power divided by voltage gives the current 840 watts divided by 14.4 volts, 58.33 amperes. So to charge a 12-volt battery, we need an MPPT controller with 60 amperes of output current, 840 watts of power handling, 100 volts of input voltage. But while we are at it, what type of MPPT controller would we need if the battery was 24 volts instead? In reality, for input voltage and power, nothing changes. However, in this case, the MPPT would have a charging voltage of 28.8 volts in bulk mode. So the output charging current would be calculated as 840 watts divided by 28.8 volts equals 29.17 amperes. What difference does this make in the price of the MPPT controller? For a 12 volt battery, we would need the Victron MPPT 150 volts, 60 amps. While for a 24 volt battery, we could use the MPPT 100 volts, 30 amps. To give you an idea, an MPPT 150, 60 costs more than 160% more than an MPPT 100 volts dash 30 amps. But that's not all. Higher output current from the MPPT means thicker cable sections which are also much more expensive. To summarize, choosing a suitable MPPT controller is essential to optimize the production and safety of your solar installation. As we have seen through examples, three main criteria must be considered, input voltage, output current, and maximum supported power. The MPPT controller must handle the maximum open circuit voltage, VOC of your panels. Be careful, this voltage increases in cold weather. For example, a panel showing 38 volts in VOC can reach 46 volts in winter. If multiple panels are connected in series, this voltage adds up. It is therefore crucial to choose an MPPT with a safety margin. The controller must be able to provide enough amperage to charge the battery. To calculate this value, divide the total power of the panels by the charging voltage of the battery. However, if the MPPT power rating is higher than that of the panels, it will limit the output current to its nominal value. As a result, the battery voltage will impact the output power. Finally, the MPPT must manage all available solar power. Make sure that the maximum PV power supported by the controller is higher than that of your panels. This question has come up several times. Why is the cable section smaller on the input side than on the output side of an MPPT controller? The answer is simple. It comes down to the difference in voltage and current due to the way the MPPT functions. For example, if you have a 425 watt solar panel with an operating voltage of 32.34 volts, the input current to the MPPT will be around 13 amperes. As we have already explained, the output current is calculated by dividing the power by the charging voltage of a 12 volt battery, which is about 14.4 volts. This gives us an output current of approximately 30 amperes. This difference directly impacts the required cable section. To help you calculate it, I have also created calculators that you can find in the description. Let me know in the comments if you need help with this. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and feel free to ask any questions in the comments. See you soon!